welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in to Two in the Cooler. If this is your first time listening to the show, please don't forget to like the podcast, rate it on Apple Podcasts, share it around, uh, show it to the people you love, because if you enjoy it, obviously they will too. Uh, you, as always, you can follow us on our social medias at Two in the Cooler, especially on Twitter. Uh, you can vote there in our Who Would Win of the Week polls that we do every week in correspondence with the episodes. We want to hear your guys' opinions on those, so don't forget to follow and vote. You can also check us out on YouTube every episode, and a lot of great highlights are up there. This episode of Two in the Cooler comes to you in affiliation with Instacart. Guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna give it to you straight. I'm a straight shooter. You know me. There has been a a slight uptick in a lot of places of of COVID-19 cases um, in a lot of states uh, and a lot of towns. Um, So why risk it by going to those crowded grocery stores? Uh, Not just that there's a lot of people there, but, you know, you have to wander through the aisles trying to find what you're looking for. You don't have to do all that. It's not necessary anymore. That's not the world we're living in. The world we're living in has Instacart. It's a world where you can get your groceries and other products from some of your favorite local stores delivered right to your door in as little as one hour. And here's the best part. Right now, Tune the Cooler listeners get free delivery on their first order of $35 or more. To get that deal, all you have to do is use the link in the show notes. And we'll get that right up there for you. Uh, So use Instacart. Guest on the show today is a friend of the podcast, Derek Stoberall. He's got a new band called Control. Their first EP, Isolation Waves, is out now. You can stream it on Spotify and Apple Music. So check that out. Let's get right into it, folks. Derek Stoberall, here's the show. Enjoy it. And we're back. We are live. How are we, Andy? Uh, feeling pretty good. Um, I'm in my uh, my elderly woman setup, as you can see here. Love um, it. I, I like only, the artwork above the bed. Well, thank you. I painted that myself uh, nice. in the mid 2000s. It was sort of my my realism phase that I was going through. <laughs> uh, we we've all been there. Um, as you can see, I've got my floral sheets. I uh, will also reveal that I have a blanket over my legs right now. So. <laughs> I've got a blanket on my feet too, actually. Um, Derek, well, we've got a great we uh, nice. we've got a great He's episode coming today. Of us, apparently. Um, <laughs> I'm really excited about it. Episode 28 here and two in the corner, almost at 30. Oh, it's 29 um, actually. <laughs> Fuck, dude! Man. I knew it was 29. Go. <laughs> god damn it! Oh my god, that's so funny. Just because right. Before okay, that's on Andy. In our quick pre-production well, meeting, what that is. lasts about 30 <laughs> seconds. I care because I like to tell the people because the people care. Sure. But anyway, today on the podcast, I'm real, I've am real. i been really looking forward to this episode. Um, special guest, very good friend of mine, friend of the pod, friend of the family, Derek Stolbro. How are you, Derek? Doing fantastic. And uh, I see since Andrew has the 2000s thing going on, I have the 70s thing going on with yeah. the beautiful, beautiful uh, wood paneling. So hey. it's nice that we can kind of touch into some different uh, <laughs> decades here. Yeah, yeah, we could remember the the old there's, days. The there's gas nothing wrong with some wood panel on. Talk yeah. about uh, uh-huh. how much we love Reagan and hate Nixon. <laughs> <laughs> Reminisce, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the yeah. Old days. Which is probably <laughs> but, um, actually going to happen a lot. since. Uh, oh, I, I would assume. Yeah, we have a lot of stories. <laughs> yeah, there will definitely be a lot of reminiscing about the good old days. Before we get into that... I want to talk a little bit about some music stuff, but before we get there, um, just quick, um, some semantics. Andy, what have you been up to this week? Catch me up. Catch the people oh, up. Man. I, you ask me this question every episode, and I always am full panic mode whenever you ask me. I always forget that you're going to ask me that. What have I been up to this week? Uh, yeah, what's going on in Rochester? What, well, I know you're not there right yeah, now. Yeah, I'm not in Rochester I mean... right now. Um, I, had to, I had to leave. Just a lot of, uh, you know... Uh, rising and grinding for uh, CBS. They've got uh, a, a wonderful uh, fall lineup. Um, just, just primed to be canceled at a moment's notice. Um, the way, the way they like to do it over there. Uh, you know, people, people get tired if you have a show that goes on for like 
I don't know, something crazy long, like two seasons or something like that. So they like yeah, to they to like to cut, kind of cut the, cut the cut off the head of the snake right up top. Keep it fresh. Yeah, keep it fresh. Great organization. And Matthew, yeah, I assume you've been up to uh, junk. Yeah, a lot of hockey, a lot of school. Um, no, no real, uh, no um, paranormal activity recently. But um, yeah, he's but we've been doing pretty well over here. Waiting for staying, the podcast. Staying busy. Yeah, he's waiting for us to start talking. I know. I gotta watch my mouth around here. Um. But I kind of want to get right into it because I think we got a lot to talk about mm-hmm. because first and foremost, before before we and get off the rails, and I'm sure that we're going to get off the rails. I love getting um, off the rails. I want to really get into um, music and specifically, Derek, like your music interests and what you've kind of been doing from um, a music and a band perspective and just like your musical background as a whole because I've known you my whole life, right? So is Andy. And growing up, your house was always, always music. You were always a talented musician. Both your parents played instruments. Your sister played instruments. And she also just got married, so congrats to her for that. We yeah. were talking about that earlier. Um, but uh, I'm sure Andy will have some questions to jump in. But kind of start from the beginning of how you started with music and then bring us quickly up to speed on what you've got going on now. Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, like, yeah, like you touched on, both my parents were huge musicians and more so my mom because she, you know, going way back was always playing saxophone and jazz bands. And, you know, she was, you know, like in her later years, got into flute and concert flute. And then my dad, of course, you know, he's, he's a singer in the easy street, big bands. And they had met um, in that band and, you know, done some side stuff as well. So, you know, they just, you know, from what they've told me, as long as as long as I've been alive, you know, they've been in so many different types of bands, everything from polka to barbershop quartets to you know jazz fusion to top 40 bands to big bands. You know, they've been in really, you know, almost every area of music. So, you know, me growing up, you know, I, I obviously wasn't as in touch with some of the stuff they were in because, you know, that, a lot of that happened before I was born. But, you know, growing up, there was always the big man that I got to go see uh, both of them in. And, you know, that just goes back to the stuff they were always playing in the house, a lot of jazz records. And uh, my dad was real into vocal groups. So I was always hearing a lot of a lot of cool music. And then so eventually I picked up saxophone, did that for six years. Um, I remember you were on saxophone for, I believe, a year, right, Matt? I, d- I dabbled. Yeah, I dabbled in fifth okay. grade. I'm excited to dabble about dabble. this because the saxophone, yeah. I'm going to say it right now, saxophone, greatest instrument of all time. There's oh, tenor yeah. sax, baby. Yeah. Tenor sax right here. And Derek yep. is a great saxophone player. I assume <laughs> you're still a great saxophone player. I don't know if you, you know, keep keep it up. But Matthew, terrible, terrible job. <laughs> and when you guys were at like peak friendship, uh, you know, Derek is goddamn, you know, Clarence Clemens basically. Uh, not to pump you up too much. And then you have <laughs> Matthew, who is like the the little bugle boy or whatever hey listen i could play my scales i I could play the pink panther theme song and i think i had the simpsons down too um and i think that's all i ever learned i know that the band like the school band in fifth grade played songs i don't know what they were i didn't know them i don't even Um, remember either well i mean i i I never learned them i definitely just faked it to that (laughs) let's let's you play the tenor and hoped it was loud enough for everybody to hear (laughs) Um, <laughs> yeah. When we were doing, uh, whenever we do scales in band, I just remember I would just sit there and improvise over them because it was just. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Derek was just doing his own thing. Um, <laughs> my biggest problem was the commitment to going to band lessons. Um, Why you was that an all time low for me? When you would do that, wouldn't you? Um, yeah, but we had Miss Reddy as a teacher though, and Miss Reddy was always doing something crazy. I feel was it Miss Reddy? Well, I had Miss Reddy. I right? was Hasley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had Miss yeah. Reddy. And, um, yeah, we were always doing something crazy, like building some shit. I don't know, talking about war, reading the Navajo Code Talker. What was that book? Code Talker, about the Navajos. Yeah. 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 Great book. Um, I don't know. I just, I just, uh, also, they wouldn't let me take my tenor sax on the bus um, because it was too big. So either I would have to get my father to drive me to school or like, I, I, yeah, I don't know. It was a very big issue 
that we had. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of hitchhiking back then. Yeah, and so I would just not go because Here's I wouldn't tip, bring tip my to all your hitchhikers out there. Various yeah. Carious axe. Because um, nothing, nothing yeah. bad could happen to that situation. No, what? No, <laughs> never. Um, yeah, I've never been very musically inclined, though. But anyway, back to Derek as Andrew already gets us off the rails. <laughs> yeah, so, I, mean, so. I, guess, I guess going forward then, uh, somewhere around, you know, junior, senior high school, I started playing guitar. And I, you know, before that was just doing sports, you know, playing hockey with Matt and, and a lot of the other guys from around the area. Uh, but then I got back into it and I really started playing a lot in college and, you know, probably playing three, four hours a day. And I got to the point where I started getting kind of decent. I joined this cover band with uh, this, this kid, Alex Marino, who lived right behind me and played with them for like two summers and, you know, kind of built up my chops a little more. And then there I met Jared Albert, who is the drummer in my current band, Control. And him and I, like once we kind of got to know each other, we had a lot of similar music interests, uh, which we can get into later. Uh, but, you know, kind of once we got to know each other, you know, last summer, we were just sitting around writing songs, throwing some ideas and jamming it together. And we did record some stuff. And then up to this summer, uh, you know, Jared kind of came up to me around July and was like, we got to get something out there. Let's try to do an EP. So, you know, around July, we kind of started getting together and we had some ideas left over and I had some new ideas. And and then uh, we got together and we kind of wrote a couple songs and and then that is our, you know, new EP that we released last week, Isolation Waves, um, you know, cleverly named after kind of everything or the whole uh, quarantine pandemic. So that uh, that's kind of where I am right now. And, you know, just still practicing and trying to get better. Yeah, sounds good. I have a couple questions. I'm glad that you brought up Jared because uh, he is a really talented drummer. He um, is insane. Yeah, yeah he, he, you know, so you can check him out on Instagram. That's where I saw him. He's got like a ton of videos up there. Um, he's Andy, didn't you do it? Didn't you do a stint on the drums? <laughs> <laughs> we got a whole band right here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Uh, legally, I can't speak to that at this time. Uh, my I do remember has the drum kit. Me. <laughs> I it's it was sitting before down you there. get back into before you get, yeah. Um, it's Jesus now in the Christ. bathroom of the basement, but it was yeah. just sitting yeah. in the basement for the longest time. And my, like, like Adriano, like, like some of those guys, we obviously would spend a lot of time in, um, in the basement, like in my parents' basement throughout the years. And, um, finally, like, it was only like a year ago that the drum set finally just got like tucked into storage. Cause it was just sitting there collecting dust for so long. And, um, <laughs> Adriano walks on the basement, he looks over and he goes, huh? I guess Andy finally tapped on the drums and I laughed so hard because I don't think that he actually sat down at that drum set more than three times. But anyway, Ooh. Andy, continue your train of thought. Well, I may have not stuck with the drums, but luckily Jared <laughs> did. And yes. yes, you guys have benefited from that greatly. Um, and he's also the uh, lyricist for your band. Um, yes. Yeah. Now, what's the collaboration process like between you two? Yeah. So I think the, the best way to think about it is, you know, I, I am more writing, you know, the music, some of the structures, uh, you know, all the chords basically and all the melodies. And Jared comes at me with a lot of different drum ideas and drum tracks and rhythms. And then uh, we kind of get together with our separate ideas. You know, we're always sending them on our Google drives. And he's also always got a slew of lyrics as well, which kind of the way I kind of take from that is if he sends me lyrics over, I can kind of get some type of musical feeling out of that to which at that point, then I can be like, okay, this is what I kind of want the sound to be like. And then at that point, it's just, you know, since it's only two of us, it's really nice. Uh, you know, there's not a lot of outside forces, so we can just kind of get our ideas, get together, you know, send our audio back and forth um, and then just jam it out and just see where it goes. And, you know, sometimes more often than not, we're usually recording just like a room mic. And then we listen back and go, Hey, we really like when we did that. Um, and that's kind of how a lot of our ideas come. And I mean, if I'm speaking more specifically off the EP, uh, the first song, Old Crow, which is just like a kind of a short, heavy song, that was just a drum track Jared sent me one time. And I just, you know, let it play and just start riffing over it. And then we kind of got that whole song out of it. So that makes a lot of sense now that you say that. Having listened to the EP, I'm not surprised that you guys kind of 
do a lot of jamming to get to the final product. A lot of like basically just playing and improvising, right, is what it sounds like and getting yeah. to that. The other thing that really struck me about it is that this, the songs that you guys have on this EP, if this makes sense, it sounds like music for people who really appreciate music and the craft and the skill that goes into playing music. Is that something that you guys are, I mean, have any awareness of when you're putting these things together? Yeah, and th that's definitely the way I think about it too. Because um, I mean, if I just briefly talk about some of the stuff Jared and I are always listening to, I mean, he's real into the Russian Tool, you know, really yeah, technical bands. That comes through. Yeah, and then I'm real into the old progressive rock and jazz fusion and uh, a lot of that stuff. And then kind of then I have that technical, you know, different style to bring in as well. So when we make music, it's you know, there, there's definitely some times, you know, we've written in the past where, you know, we're just writing some, you know, easier groovy stuff that sounds nice. You know, there's a time and place for that. But um, I think, you know, our biggest thing that we want to do with this EP was to show people what we can do right now, uh, kind of the ability that we're at, and then just try to, you know, really write something that is maybe different than what you would hear normally. So that's kind of what we went for. And, you know, a lot of it's just whatever just came out of our instruments. Okay, that kind of goes into what I was really curious about because I'm listening to this EP and there's a lot of different stuff on it I would say and I kind of had you know being not quite as familiar with music it's and this kind of goes into it being uh, music that's for people that really like appreciate and think about music um, th it's it was hard for me to pin down like if somebody asked me, like, what the style that you guys play, I'm not sure how I would answer that. How would you answer that question? I have I have the exact response, because we always joke about it, Jared and I, because we, we just call it amalgamation rock. So we just have all our Shit, influences, and, a, yeah. and that's, we don't think about what, you know, we don't try to keep it in one box. We just try to, you know, do whatever we want to do with it. And if it, you know, like the song Looper, it's almost 11 minutes, and it has all these sections, you know, we don't that just happened it's you know and we didn't want to stop ourselves from doing that so okay see with looper especially does have very distinct sections to that song and i was kind of curious about uh if that was intentional anyway because 11 minutes is longer than i guess you would typically have a song um yeah. so i mean is that something where you guys feel that there's a story being told and you don't want to cut it short? That uh, that kind of, it kind of felt like that listening to it. Um, so I'm just curious if that was something that's kind of intentional. Um, but it, I, I mean, obviously, you guys, it sounds like uh, don't want to be put in any kind of box, and you don't want your music to be put in any kind of box. You don't want to put any restraints on it. Um, and based on this EP, I think that's something you guys have really benefited from. Yeah, absolutely. I think with Looper, um, that was the intention because it, it, we knew that on this whole EP, we wanted one long song. We wanted kind of a, you know, a bit of a roller coaster ride song, um, just something to go through a bunch of different styles and, and to have a bunch of different kind of contrasting sections. So uh, when we started putting that song together, you know, I came, I came in with a bunch of ideas and, and we just kept refining and refining them. And it got to the point, you know, like basically what we do, you know, kind of when we're almost done writing the song is we get a piece of paper out and we chart every single beat down. And, you know, we see if we need to add stuff, we need to add more space, maybe add a different section so it doesn't go, you know, from like a super rough transition to another one. You know, we want things to be kind of smooth in that factor. So at that point, yeah, we had like, four or five different sections in mind that we'd been jamming on and we wanted to kind of put them together in some way. And that's just kind of where we went with that. And yeah, definitely the intention was we wanted a long song that had a bunch of different styles and we wanted to have some type of story almost. Mm -hmm. So when you were doing that song, was there a point where you guys were moving sections around to see sort of, you know, if, if A and C is better, you know, reversed or flipped and you put D in the middle of that or what? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff going on in that song uh, in terms of sound. But we would just even just sit there, me on guitar and him on drums, and we jam the whole song through. And 
and then we would stop and be like, okay, I don't know, like that, that one part seems a little bit of a quick transition. We need to add something there to, you know, give some more space. And then maybe we say, well, let's take, yeah, let's, let's take that section that we have later and let's bring it over here and just see how it sounds. So that's definitely part of it. Um, it's just a lot of uh, trial and error. And then until we, we feel like we like the flow of it and, and we feel like it has all the necessary things that we want to do with the song. Uh, speaking of flow, the, the very first song that starts the EP, Old Crow, the yes. very the the opening of that song. If you're listening to the CP, the first thing you hear is a crow noise. That seems very uh, ambitious to me, um, and almost and honestly risky in a way. So, what uh, made you guys want to start the EP with that song? Well, we definitely wanted you know the opening of the EP, and this is something that I always felt like when I listened to an album for like the first time. I want to hear a lot of sound at the beginning. So shortly after the crow, all the sound comes in. But, you know, my choice to put the crow and the whiskey uh, sound effect in there came from uh, one night, two summers ago, uh, I went over to Jared's and we were going to work on some stuff and I wanted to, you know, pick up a bottle of whiskey. So I stopped at some drugstore, you know, liquor store over on River Road and I was just like looking at all like the whiskeys and I just saw one called Old Crow. So I was like, I want to try that because it looked cool. And I brought that <laughs> over and it was terrible. It was just this horrible <laughs> whiskey. So, so, and then at that point, we just kind of always joked about it. And, and then, you know, when you have an instrumental song with no lyrics to it, you're like, okay, what do we call this thing? So, you know, we're just like, let's just call it a crow after this whiskey. So I was like, all right, I'm going to add a crow sound effect and some whiskey pouring at the beginning of it. And then all the sound will come in when you least expect it. Okay, yeah, that's that sounds really good hearing you like tell that back. Like, wow, you got to come out with a song. You got to come out with a song called Topaz. Topaz. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> 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 That'll be our next epic song. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's the uh, the, te- the the tequila version of of old yeah Crow, of old Crow, which was uh. our first endeavor in the world of alcohol. So. <laughs> <laughs> Quite the interesting choice we picked there was the, yep. the topaz yep. tequila. Sends a shiver down my spine. Just yeah, I, I I don't even drink like nice tequila, let alone ever taking a sip of topaz again. Yeah, and that oh, yeah, thing yeah. was probably bottled in 1994. Yeah, and, yeah. And, Where did you yeah, get? Did uh, an old man wander up to you guys? <laughs> was, <or> we <laughs> were young. We it was when we were in high school, and it was in Derek's uh, Derek's house. Yeah, we I, just I, ever. Yeah. I didn't want to touch the nice alcohol because then they would know that we drank the nice mm-hmm. alcohol. So I was like, what? I just dug through above the fridge and found a old bottle of, I think there was an old bottle of gin up there from who knows when. Like yeah. it still had, I might've been like Ames or something, some defunct department or yeah. like you know, liquor store or something. And then there was the Topaz, which was just this, you know, crappy. This tequila. plastic bottle. Yeah. Oh. Just the grossest mm-hmm. tequila you could drink and it was like a gold tequila right it wasn't like a clear tequila yeah. it was like it was like a golden oh yeah, yeah that shit was not that that was not tasty at all but we had i mean hey i mean i don't want to get off track from the music thing but i had to chime in the second you started talking about old crow and uh <laughs> make sure we didn't didn't forget uh forget where we started our old friend topaz <laughs> <laughs> oh lordy now, i'm just kind of curious about um aside from this interesting choice in alcohol, I guess, with, you know, some of your, your parents' tastes. Um, obviously, you got exposed to a lot uh, because your parents played so many different styles and in so many different types of bands, but what kind of music would they listen to? What was playing around the house? Yeah, it, it was a pretty wide range. If we're talking more, you know, five, ten years ago, I mean, my dad like he loves the the 80s like african-american female vocal groups so pointer sisters slick you know those are always playing shaka khan you know all that stuff and then he would listen to a lot of you know uh more jazz female singers like shirley bassey and uh janice siegel and then my mom on the other hand you know she would listen to a lot of classical music um a lot of vivaldi and then a lot of jazz, uh, John Coltrane and and uh, local guy Bobby Militello and and this uh, local jazz fusion group that I love called Gamelon um, that were kind of big in the 90s. And then Spyro Gyra, too, is another local 
you know, jazz fusion group as well. I've been listening to them a lot lately, actually. So that was kind of a lot of the basis of it. So classical jazz and then vocal groups. And then I loved when I was super young, I loved the beach boys. And, uh, that was kind of like my first band that I, I really liked. What's interesting, you know, talking about these vocal groups, I guess I had never heard you sing before and, yeah. you know, as many years as, you know, we've known each other and like been around, um, but you got a good voice, man, and Thanks. it yeah. works, you know, super well with the with the songs you're saying. Um, did you? I mean, did you always sing, and we just didn't know about it, or did you? Did you learn practice? What's the deal? Yeah, I was a classic shower singer, so shower and car singer, where no one can hear me because there's, <laughs> you know, you there you're shielded by you know a, a giant box. So I, I mean, that's kind of how I I would just sing in the shower and stuff and maybe occasionally with my parents in the car or something. But, you know, even to this day, like, you know, this might be something that you understand. Like, w even when I hear my voice played back, even if it's a take I liked, it's just the cringiest thing. I don't know if you get that when you listen to the podcast back and you just hear your voice, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, I get that when I hear recorded. Matthew's voice uh, on the <laughs> podcast and in real life. Um, and in real life. <laughs> but, but what are you going to do? Classic yeah. shower singers. I feel like most shower singers are kind of, shy people were you shy about your singing absolutely yeah and and this kind of goes back to that cover band i was in for a little while uh we were doing these like acoustic gigs at spot coffee and uh i was just like i'll sing a song and then that was the first time i sang in public and then after that it's just this giant weight that got lifted off my shoulders and it's like i don't have any stage fright anymore because of that you just got to get it out of the way really after one time it was just gone like yeah. that holy cow yeah I mean, maybe not completely gone because there's, you know, there's times you're, you know, you got a solo coming up. You want to, you want to do the solo well, or, you know, you want to sing this part right. Um, but, you know, I think that just that one time, the first time I did it, I just felt so much more comfortable with myself, you know, singing after that. But I, I still, to this day, like, I don't consider myself much of a singer, mainly guitar, um, but I'll do it because at the moment it's Jared and I. So um, I think, I think my vocals can, can add uh, with his lyrics, you know, what we want to do with the songs. Yeah, well, it comes together all very nicely. And you are, I mean, both of you guys are playing double, triple duty in this band right now. I mean, you're on bass, guitar, Jared's got drums and lyrics going on. Um, mm -hmm. When it comes to the things outside that, because I assume there are other elements, it sounded like I heard some piano or synth on some of these tracks, is that right? Yeah. How do you divvy that up? Yeah, that's just, I, I have a couple keyboards in the basement, you know, at my parents' house, so that, uh, I I started playing piano really young, kind of left that out earlier when I was talking about history playing instruments, uh, but, I, you know, I've always been able to sit down on the piano and jam on it, and um, if there's something I want to add, I can practice it and be able to throw that in there uh, for recordings, but, you know, a lot of the times when you hear a synthy sound, I usually do that with my guitar, because uh, I have a lot of pedals and effects, so that's kind of what I aim to do most of the time, but, um, yeah, the fourth track, Court of Strangers, has a lot of keys in it. So uh, that's, yeah, that, that was added by uh, me. Okay, cool. Court of Strangers. Yeah, that's probably my favorite song on this EP. I really mm -hmm. liked, I really liked Court of Strangers. I was like, wow, this is, this is a really good Thank song. Thank you. Um, yeah, so uh, there's, oh man, there's nothing more impressive to me than like a musician that can like really play the piano it feels to me like the piano is kind of where everything else stems from because you know it is certainly just because my musical vocabulary is so small it is a very musical instrument um but it's also kind of i mean at its core it's it's a, it's a percussion instrument in a lot of ways yeah. you know strings and stuff like that um yeah, there's nothing more impressive, I think, than a musician that can just, like, start going at the piano. That's a skill I always wish they had had. Yeah. It's, uh, because it, you think about it, it's just every note is in front of you. It's all across, and there's no, there's no, uh, you know, digital processing, you know, if you're just playing an acoustic piano. Like, you, whatever sound comes out of that thing is all on you. And yeah, I agree. It's it's always cool, like when you see someone that just walks down to a piano, sits down, and is able to play something cool. Like I always, my dad used to tell me that there's this guy uh, that he knew growing up, 
and whenever there was a party, this guy would sit down and just start playing ragtime piano. I, I always thought that was such a cool story. Oh my god, <laughs> that's such a power move, man! I that Isn't is that like that? A, yeah. God, that is like living my dream. I bet you, you get, <laughs> I bet you, you get some ass playing some ragtime. Absolutely. Yeah, without a doubt. We can meet. That's like the perfect <laughs> soundtrack to a party, too. I mean. Yeah. Just to encapsulate all the craziness that goes on, you know, just some some ragtime piano. Yep. <laughs> Should have stopped it. Should have stopped it there. That's what I've always said. <laughs> Pinnacle music. Yes. Ah. Uh, well, um, I'm sure that we'll touch back on the music, but before we do start to get away to it and get into some other aspects of um, your life and our kind of childhood together. Um, and we'll do this again at the end, but where can people find this music? Where can they find the band, social media, stuff like that? Yeah, so um, our EP, Isolation Waves, is the name of it, and our group is called Control. Uh, that is available for streaming on Spotify and Apple Music. Just search Isolation Waves or Control if you'd like to listen. Uh, our Instagram is control.band. Uh, there is a link you know, right on our Instagram page that will take you to all the places you can listen to it. So. That's another place to look for it. And then we also have a Facebook, control.band.page. Another place you can go. There's a link there. You can click right on it. It'll show you all the places you can get it. So uh, if you have some time laying around and you want to listen to some local music, give us a listen. Yeah, it's the right call. Check it and out. We'll, Check we'll it out. toss a link in the show description of this, and we'll have some stuff on our socials as well. Um, Thank you. It. Now. Um, but, yeah, so now into a l- little change of pace here. So Derek and I, I don't even remember when we met or how we met, honestly. I don't know if that's a bad, bad friend of me. I just, well, one, I don't have a very good memory to begin with. Um, yeah. But for pretty much as long as I can remember, I mean, we took the bus together. Yeah. Um, we would get off the bus and ride our bikes to one in somebody's house. And we would play any type of recreational game that they could find. We'd play street hockey mostly, but we play football. We play, we even played a little lacrosse, a lot Cross, of like, uh, I was going to say a lot of uh, like pickle in the middle. I remember oh, playing yeah. a Go lot, the of, a lot of that game, a lot pickle of ghosts in, in the, the graveyard. Middle? Yeah. Is pickle in the middle, like monkey in the middle. Is that the same thing? No. Or like pickle. What's it called? I'm thinking of that baseball game. Where, oh. like, you're in between bases, you know what oh, I mean? Yeah, oh, yeah, that is pickle. Oh, and you're, like, in oh, a pickle. Oh, uh, yeah, pickle. Hot box, hot box. Yes. Hot box. Yes, That's hot the name box. of it. Hot okay. box. Yeah. yeah. We played a lot That's of a hot game. box. I love Yeah, it's that a great fun. game. Except we would only, we would always play with, like, um either, like, the softer baseballs or, like, tennis balls because people would just get beamed if uh, – Because you're throwing you know, it. None of us claim to be – Yeah. None of us claim to be like good base or like professional no. baseball players. You know what I mean, we just sure. like to. Uh, so then, as we kind of did that, I mean, and then then hockey really kicked in, and and we we were playing hockey together, going to school together, um, hanging out all the time, and then and then we started, and then it you know at, like it became like a weekend thing, like sleepovers and stuff. Growing up, like through elementary school and middle school, and. Um, a lot of fun times, a lot of funny stuff. I was actually thinking today, I was just kind of trying to rack my brain knowing you were coming on, thinking of any, you know, specific moments. And I couldn't necessarily like come up with anything crazy that I remember super specifically because we did a lot of stuff over yes. the course of a lot of years. But the one thing that I do like know, and this is something that w- it has to be just lost at this point in time, but I'm almost positive that I still remember your home phone number by heart. And I obviously won't re- say it over yeah, the air, not a good um, idea. but, but I, I'm, I'm 99% positive that I still have it memorized because I would get off the bus. I would wait 10 minutes because you were just a little and after I me. Get dropped and then, out. yep. And then I would call and you know, your mom would answer and I would say, is Derek there? And she would either say like, yeah, or she'd be like, nope, he can't, he's got stuff to do. Can't do anything tonight. And then, uh, it just evolved from there into a lot of um, my personal secretary horror movies and Doritos and Mountain Dew, Mountain Dew. and a lot of GameCube, Mountain and then Holler. that turned in, in yeah yeah Mountain Holler, and then that turned into <laughs> um, whatever liquor was laying around our parents' house, and as time evolved, it just continued. Um, so we've definitely got a lot of good moments. Um, Andy, I don't know if you you remember those days, but yeah, I remember. 
those I there was a point in time where Derek was over at our house more than I was for sure. Um, Absolutely. Like without a doubt, like sub, like he was here substantially more than I was. Um one thing that I'm pretty sure you introduced Matthew to, but it's introduced the household that I want to thank you for, is Simpsons hit and run, game, greatest game of all time. Game ever. Um, but there's one thing that I want to say fuck you to both of you guys about, and it's this one, there's probably a lot of things I could say it about, but there's this one particular moment, I'm curious if you guys remember it. So I was sleeping in, and for some reason it was only the three of us at home. And you guys came up with this plan that you would kick open my door and shoot off an airsoft gun. It didn't have any BBs in it. You would just fire and make a loud noise. What kind of gun? It was like some kind of assault rifle. I had airsoft yeah, gun. Yeah, my airsoft gun. Yeah, that Matthew had. Oh, um, wow. So I'm, I'm like laying in bed. And I hear like the shuffling outside my door. And I hear like, and I see these shadows beneath beneath the door, and these whispers like, these guys are gonna kick open that door, and they're gonna fire that airsoft rifle at me. And I was thinking like, okay, they're gonna expect me to flip out and be scared. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna lay here and pretend that I don't hear it. And I'm just curious. And that's what I was curious about if you guys remembered that moment because. The way I remember it is you bust open the door and you fire the thing and I just didn't move and I just looked at you guys like, what the, What are you doing? Like, get out of here. What if I actually hit it You cut out there, Matthew. I said, what if I would have had it loaded and I actually started shooting at you? Then would you? how would you have just sat, sat still? Well, that's a, that's a whole different situation, I guess. I don't. I honestly I don't, have no. Idea. I don't remember that I at did all. Not think I, like I have zero ahead. memory of that. I. I. Re- it's one of those memories where I can like kind of view it from like a third person perspective, but I can't hone in on like the details. Right. But I do. I do remember just like barging in there, and I just remember Matt just like spraying the gun or whatever. And it was. I think it was a clear automatic gun, if I remember correctly. No, I didn't have a clear one. My my. Oh, it was. Okay. It was black. But I I to, I forget about like I for, we used to play a lot of airsoft too. I loved playing yeah. airsoft. It's like the close. So <clears throat> this is how I'll explain like my theory with airsoft. It's like <laughs> a f- a friend of mine had this idea. Well, it was it was an outside idea of like, do you think that if so, say somebody made a radius, like we'll call it like a four, like a, or like a two mile radius, like a circle. And the, I, the concept was created in Ellicottville, so obviously it's not like here. It's mostly woods, right, where the two-mile radius would be. And what? So, th- so there's a group of guys, so there would be like five, six guys, and they all have firearms, like they all have guns. And you get a two-hour head start, and then for the next 24 hours, they search that two-mile or however big you decide to make the radius – for and you have to hide but the catch would be that if you actually got found in that 12 hour frame so you have 12 hours to get found that like they shoot you like they shoot you and and you die my theory was that that would be one of the craziest things to do because if you believe that you could hide like the adrenaline rush that would come from knowing that people, and I can hear my, I think my roommate's laughing at me because I've talked with him about this plenty of times. Like, I think that the adrenaline rush that you would get from hiding from people that were actually trying to kill you would be an experience like no other. Absolutely. Is it crazy for me? Yeah, but that, I think that's why I loved Air Force. Like that theory of like, or Airsoft, like the theory of like fighting for your life. I don't know. It's just it's an <laughs> adrenaline rush and I love it. Because there was, there was, I know, you know, when you're playing airsoft, you clearly know that there are non-lethal rounds getting yeah. at you. But when someone, when you hear a gun go off and you hear, you know, bullets hitting. It still hurts. You, like, it, it still it hurts. Of, it, it, yeah. And, and I won't mention names, but there were people that we played with that had far superior equipment than us, you know, and our little Chinese rifles. Yeah. And my yeah, sweatshirt. We, 
Yeah, we and they had the they had they were ghillie suits running around practically. Yeah, ghillie suits yeah. And, and like like air air mesh like professional stuff. It's just and their guns just shot so. so <laughs> and they were just and, ripping us. Yeah, I, I specifically remember. I actually think I don't know if it was you, but I specifically remember playing with like one of those guys, and we were walking through like the woods. So where we used to play, I mean, nobody re- else really understands this because they can't see where we used to play airsoft. But it was almost like it was an abandoned, like, kind of like, it was actually an abandoned track for remote control RC cars, like a racetrack, right? But when we were younger, it was still big enough where we could ride our bikes on it. But once it got overgrown and then it's surrounded by forest and then lined by a cornfield. So we would play back there and there's like a bank turn. And I remember coming like around through the woods and being on the bank turn, looking out into like one of the fields of tall grass. And I think it was you and somebody else were like prone in the grass looking out towards the cornfield. So we were actually behind you. And the kid that I was with who had like a far superior gun just – and like we all would wear like face equipment, right? Like goggles or like face masks. But they don't protect the back of your head. And I remember him just buzzing around off the back of somebody's head. And I was like, (laughs) wow, that was so mean. But it was so funny. Yeah, we did a lot of of stuff like that. Another thing that I actually – give you credit for is like my my love and understanding and knowledge of all scary movies of all genres throughout all of history um that was one big thing we had in common was we loved watching just the scariest movies we could find oh yeah, and i still do to this day yeah me too that was you know we we would yank all the the pillows off my couch and make like put them on the floor and make that whole like area. Then we put a bag of Doritos in between them, and then we just lay there. And you know, I had all I had The Shining and the original Halloween on VHS, and yeah, you know, maybe we would go to Redbox, um, you know, and grab a movie from there. But we were, I think, we might have gotten into some some streaming too at some point with our with a laptop. But yeah, no, yeah, we, I think yeah, that, yeah. But you know, it's actually was, impressive that we watched as many movies as we did. Thinking back on it, because. We watched all the classics and as many new scary movies as we could, all of that. And really, without it was before you could we could just pull up any movie we wanted on our laptop. I remember like even like the Grave Encounters movies. I remember oh, yeah. those. Those are great movies. Um, Fantastic. Yeah, I, we 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 definitely uh, and a lot of mini sticks too. A lot of mini and violent oh mini God. sticks. I haven't violent thought about ass. mini sticks in years. If somebody gave me a net right now, I'd play a game of mini sticks in the street if I had to. I would love to play some mini sticks. I've lost a lot of blood playing that game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like literally. Like mini sticks. <laughs> it was it was no holds barred. It was great. Was it your birthday did it was it a birthday party of yours? Do you remember this? Yeah. I think you yeah. had a birthday party at your house. <laughs> yeah. And literally we were gonna have a mini sticks tournament, and like literally the first game of the mini sticks tournament, you like Literally, like, I don't remember if it was, like, your nose or, like, your tooth. Like, something got knocked somewhere and just blood everywhere. And we are like, uh, like, do we keep playing the, the tournament or? I, I did have a birthday party where we played mini sticks. But what you're thinking of was uh, that was at the hands of, I believe, the person who had all the really nice airsoft. The air- yeah. <laughs> I think it was, oh, my too. God. Who uh, is this person? I mean, they, don't, they, you don't have to say it, but Jesus Christ. Uh, search your local prison, Great I guess, guy. is what Great. it sounds like. Awesome Great guy, guy One of my best friends. Great but let me say, he also yeah. had a really nice mini hockey stick. And that really nice mini hockey stick was made of composite fiber. And yeah. Yeah. It, was, it was twice the size of my mini hockey stick. And when he <laughs> took a slap shot, the tip hit me right in the bridge of my nose and gashed me open. <laughs> so <laughs> That's what it was. I knew that there was... Yeah. Uh, it's all a blur. It's all a blur. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> That was I funny. Can think of, they got to bring. I can think of. Back. I'm like, I actually. Hell yeah! I moved out, and uh, my roommate, when he went home the one day, he grabbed his mini hockey stuff. So we have them down in our family room. We'll move all the furniture out and play. So yeah, uh, I've uh, I've I've played a few. I've played mini sticks a few times within the past like three or so years, but um, I don't have carpet. You yeah, that's the problem. Is without a nice mini stick carpet, it's tough to play. Um, it's gonna be tough to so that's yeah i know i can actually barely bend down as it is or like sit down and get up without needing like a uh a, a, a enormous amount of help so i don't even know if my knees could handle um crawling around on the ground i remember like legit being sweaty like i have to go home oh, and yeah. shower 
because I've been playing mini sticks so, so intensely. Every single pair of sweatpants I owned had a hole in, in the knees, without a doubt. All the socks, um, too. Yeah, yeah, socks. I remember wearing, thing. like, like, do you remember, like, that that sweatpants? I, I don't, I haven't seen them in forever, but, like, that sweatpants material that was almost, like, shiny like not like the yeah, like yeah, the yeah. sweatsuit like not like a hockey sweatsuit but like it wasn't but it wasn't like a, a cloth sweatpant it was like a almost kind of looks like, like what a basketball warm-up would be but it had like that shiny like coating over top of it like do you can you picture did, the sweatpant did, material that i'm talking about did they make a crazy sound when he walked in them Were um they, like, no 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 noisy ones no, those ones are more like the windbreaker style. Andy, can you picture yeah. what I'm talking about? I know no, that I was we had them. the windbreaker style too. Like, and a lot of times they had buttons on the bottom instead of like a zipper. Um, and when you would play mini hockey on them, they wouldn't like necessarily get holes right away, but they would actually get like like burns in them, like it smoothed out burns. <laughs> yeah, and the knees would be virtually, which is another thing we used to do too. We would like. I don't know how old we were at the time, but probably not old enough to be like we would like just take this these plastic, probably cancerous mini hockey sticks and just heat them up over the stove, chuck an oven mitt on, and just bend the shit out of them. So you're working with an absolute banana of a curve. You actually couldn't even shoot the ball low. It shit would just you'd be running into the kitchen every every thirty seconds to go get the mini stick ball. But um, <laughs> and then um, and then it was a quick switch from from mini hockey to like pool hopping, and and I we. Pool hopping, I don't think should be illegal because it's actually just hysterical. Nothing and if you were it. to like, if something bad were to happen to you in somebody else's pool, it's your fault. Like the other person's not liable because I remember like a lot of times like jumping in random people's pools and it was so fun. Like that's a great feeling. Like let's jump in this person's pool for no reason, swim a lap, and run away like we just like committed a serious crime. But in reality, we were just, I don't know. Start kicking up the dirt, helping their filter work for them. I guess I don't know. It was, it was the best summer activity. You know, it's you, you have some friends yeah. over. Yeah, you, you watch a movie, get some snacks, uh, and then you go out at one in the morning and jump in people's pools. I mean, Should, come on, I, that's, what, yeah. what, just and clarify we both, real here that you guys both grew up in houses that have pools in the backyard. With pools, yeah, that's what I was about to say. Yeah, both had pools. Could have just gone in those, yeah. But that's man, that's not fun. Thing, I guess again. Yeah. Okay. That the 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 real life manhunt idea is, I think that might Terrible. be how I want to go out. Like yeah. I might, like I might, like if I, like you know, when I get to that age, if I can still function, but I know like it's it's coming to an end. I think that might be my play is a uh, just let people hunt me. Who would you have hunt you? Would it be people you like, just hire somebody, or people no. that you know? Put a bounty on yourself. Yeah, uh-huh. like Bauer. Metzler, <laughs> you would live forever. Guys, that I know, like Odd, maybe could take you out. But if if it's those other two chasing you, I mean, Metzler woods, would be the best hunter of them all, probably. I wouldn't you know, be afraid of like Chris part. McEwen. He's been hunting for like My three guy, years now. I don't think he's ever even came close to shooting something. If he was out there, um, but yeah, I, I, but I mean, and like more people. So that, yeah, I don't know, but I think that, uh, I think it would be quite the adrenaline rush to get hunted. <laughs> It, it, what what is it? What's that book? World's, like, uh, world's, world's most dangerous, most dangerous game. game. Yeah, 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 like that. Like I want to be hunted. Maybe not on a secluded island by a real serial killer, but like, I mean, yeah. But if like, I don't know, or like, or like, you could work out a deal. Like, I right, you don't get killed, but like shot, like somewhere where you're gonna live. But like, because I don't know, like. I think about that a lot too. I know this is a thing that I'm not the only person who thinks about this, but like, I want to know what it feels like to be shot. They say it like burns, you know what I mean? Because the bullet's so hot going through right. like your skin and it like cooks you almost. Like it stings like a burn. And like, so you just like shoot me in the leg or something when you find me and then drag me back and get me fixed up. You can't just say this stuff out like that you want to be shot. People, John no, Lennon. Be, no. You're going to end yeah. up with John Lennon. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. No, I'm saying like in a secluded setting. Like, I, 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 and obviously I haven't done it yet, so like there's definitely some fear holding me back. But I'm saying that the the pure adrenaline rush of being hunted in real life would probably probably be insane. I bet that would be pretty addicting. You're right. This is a terrifying conversation yeah. that I do not want to have. To be clear, but I I will agree with you <laughs> to your point there. 
Well, that plays in the whole morbid mm-hmm. curiosity of like paranormal stuff too, or like you know, yeah. last, you know, why do people watch horror movies? Because it just yeah out at that you know taps into your psyche. And it's I know, and as you know, when we were talking about paranormal experts, I referenced you as one of my uh, foremost uh, experienced paranormal <laughs> experts. Um, not only have we seen every paranormal activity movie and every yeah. ghost movie really that's worth seeing. Um, uh, also, I feel like you used to have some ghost stories, no? Didn't you used to have a few? Uh... I never had any personal ones, but I mean, I'm trying to. I'm trying to think. There was, there was always, if I remember correctly. I think growing up in my grandparents' house, toys. Yeah, I think that. Yeah, like I think that's that, pretty typical stuff. But yeah, I don't have any. I don't have any super stuff. crazy stuff. Uh, like so, like some people have some ridiculous stuff. I don't know if you know. I, I know you've had a little fiasco going on, Andy. I don't oh know yeah, you my yeah. Accounts. Here's my theory about ghosts. If everyone's a ghost, is that first of all, every person is a ghost. Um, but my theory about ghosts is, and this is not based in anything, my theory about ghosts is that if I don't want to see them, they won't, they won't show up. And I don't, like, they know, like, ghosts, I don't know what ghosts are, but they seem to me like some kind of energy type deal. And if they're energy, they can read energy. And if I'm putting out the energy that says, like, don't, like, don't show up like i don't want to see you then i feel like they will not show up and i have kind of the same thing about good ghosts would respect that decision though but what if it's like a pissed off ghost you know what i mean i haven't experienced that yet so i can't but i don't know i just you don't run into a pissed off one like they just so like i don't want to i have don't want to see one so badly that they're like okay we'll just we'll just scram we'll just get out of here and I kind of have the same theory about, like, aliens. Because I know if I ever got abducted by aliens, I would be like, wipe my memory, guys. Like, if you could do that, just wipe it. Because I don't want nothing to do with this. I'm not interested. Well, well and I think... Because imagine um, being the crazy person that cries alien, too. I think about this all the time. Like, if I ever yeah. really got abducted by aliens, and I didn't think that I could prove it to people, I think I would just keep it a secret my whole life. Because, I don't know, you know, some people, like, I don't know. <laughs> well, I That's think, I think mine too. <laughs> I think if you're looking at ghosts and aliens, there's kind of a similar thing you can look at. You know, being the Fermi paradox, either they exist or they don't, and both are equally terrifying. And which is kind of weird to think about because you know, if they do exist, that's insane. But if they don't, that's also pretty terrifying. Uh, but as far as because then we just go, die. Yeah, then it's like you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> gnarly. <laughs> it's metal. Uh, yeah (laughs) like aliens like i i feel like the common misconception with aliens is that like if you somehow came in contact with one like it would be so foreign like you would not even probably know it's an alien that's something people people humanize them you know what i mean dude i think i don't know you ever watch bob lazar yes but we're talking like there's potential that like because when you see alien even like the craziest alien that you could imagine. Like, let's say it looks like some kind of Cronenberg monster, like just a big, yeah, like, yeah. clump of something completely unrecognizable. There's even potential that, because that's still something that we can, like, perceive in a way, right? There's potential for, like, an alien. I hope this is what you're saying, Derek, otherwise, I'm going to sound like a oh, lunatic. Yeah, absolutely. But that it's just, no, it it's is. just something completely unfathomable fathomable i should have chosen a smaller like word something that that's our, on me something that our imaginations can't even like develop exactly. or grasp you know, it's like yeah. when uh, like the like the you know ancient greek stories about when somebody like looks upon like the true face of like a god or it's fucking it's the fucking it's indiana jones it's open in the goddamn uh it's open in the the lost ark they saw something in there that you know was so mind-boggling yeah. That they could, you would go insane. Ex- you would yes, go insane. you would go crazy because your mind just could not put. Which goes back to my theory together. that I would just deny that it happened. Scary dream, bad dream. Yeah, and there, it, it's kind of scary to think like there's probably no way you could communicate what happened with anyone. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Because like that's it. Unless you ha- unless you were given proof, 
like just the most pure form of proof that nobody in the world could could, could deny, there would always be skept like you'd never be able to get people to believe you. Oh yeah. yeah. Like unless you were like, yo, like aliens, come check out my hometown, Weefield. Super simple. We got good pizza. You can see the falls up close. Come through. <laughs> Go on the made of the you mist. Park in my, you can park in my driveway. Yeah. Um, and we'll just drive human cars around. Um, and the, yeah, unless you could really do that and, and expose them to other people, you, you'd be an absolute nut. Um, I was thinking about even, this. Even or, video wouldn't do it justice. No. Yes. Because you can manipulate video. Agree. That's a thing. Yeah. I was thinking about this. Um, I've been thinking about this like all week, basically. Because, you know, I work at like a TV station and I watch a lot of news just at work. I was thinking about like um, how, you know, some folks are so like, like really into the Bible. And I feel like if there had been a video of the Bible back then, people would not have like believed it and been into it. But because they read it, it became something else. And I was thinking about it, and that's still something that we have. Like, if you watch, you know, if you're a liberal and you watch Fox News, if you're a conservative and you watch MSNBC, you watch both of these, and, you know, they're showing you things, but you don't believe it. But you see a fucking headline on Twitter, and it's like, oh, this is this is fact. There's something about the written word, and maybe because they're the only way to, to perceive it, 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 like, just you... There's a natural filtering process that goes into that. That's sort of a screen that's taken down a little bit when you're like watching something. Um, but yeah, I've been thinking about that all week, and it's just fascinating that that's something that like is still is still around. So I well, don't you're know. able to you're able to read it in your own voice and kind of put your own your own character on it. Right, which I think would be why, which is why you know a lot of times when you look at you know, movies, the book is always held at a higher regard because it's just left to a lot of interpretation. Um, whereas, so you know, when... I'll, yeah, I'll give you my, my current synopsis. I don't know if that's the right word of religion. I'm completely, I am completely invested in the fact that everything that happens in the Da Vinci Code, it was real. Like, you know how they talk about how the Holy Grail is actually Jesus' wife and that would, they keep that a secret because that would prove that Jesus was actually mortal and he was developed, you know, all the stuff like Constantine and he wanted to switch everything to Christianity on his deathbed and whatnot that happens. Like, that's how I view it. I'm like, you know what? The Holy Grail, it's a lady and she is buried somewhere. And on top of that, Jesus, um, although may have been, you know, like a divine as a human was probably mortal because the Da Vinci Code told me so. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I might watch the Da Vinci Code after this. I've it's on it Amazon before. Prime now. You've never yeah. seen the Da Vinci Code? And I never have. No. Dude. I heard it's fantastic. So I just yeah. told that whole spiel. Dude. Oh, my God. Lock yourself in for... Give yourself six hours tonight. I don't care if you got schoolwork, homework, work, work. I don't care what you got tomorrow. Get off. Watch The Da Vinci Code. It's on Amazon Prime free of charge if you have Amazon Prime. And then watch Angels and Demons, which you probably have to pay three ninety nine for, but it will be worth it because it's also just as crazy. I've I'm telling you, that watch one. The Da Vinci Code right now. What the fuck? Demons. What do you mean? It's the, it's the sequel. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's not oh, okay. necessarily based off of. It's two different stories, but it's the same. Like it's still Tom Hanks, and he's also like it kind of like what happens in the last movie, like factors into what he's doing, even though it's like a different storyline, different kind of mystery he's trying to solve. I compare those movies to like the like the adult version of National Treasure, Dude, like National oh Treasure. God. But if you took the Disney out of it and like allowed there to be like more like graphic, like murders and like darker like history behind it you know what i mean when's the third one coming out um so actually andrew and i are on the board yeah um uh well so it seems from the last i've heard that they've decided to go with a tv show instead of a third movie that will be um exclusive to disney plus i believe right andy is that what we've heard really uh, we have heard that there's a TV show, but we don't know if it's uh, yeah. We don't know if it's going to be still a movie, movie or yeah. 
or even if it's going to be featuring the Gates family, yeah, or anything like is that. Nick, I, I hope Nick Cage is in it. Well, he's doing that Tiger King show. He could do. I mean, he could do. Here's it. the thing about Nick Cage: is he's that he actor. does not care if you yeah. if you hand him a script and say, "I will give you." McDonald's for lunch every day for this entire filming. He will record that movie. He's, he's a jack of all trades. He's a and as uh, as the as the co-host of Film Juice, Joe Dorado says, he's the best actor in the world. There it is. No, seriously, like just we didn't say it. Joe Dorado did. And I would Joe never Dorado say that. Joe Dorado said movie. it. <laughs> yes, he can just do magic. Look, raising Arizona, like that movie. Just oh my god. Yeah. If it. I heard a story about, you know, them casting Nick Cage in that movie. And what happened was he went in an interview with the Coen brothers and they just laughed at him for like 20 minutes, just the way he looked. And I guess they called him back and like just cast him in the role. Cause he was just hilarious. He just has a, he's very, he's a hilarious aura to him and he's a great actor. There's something about and he'll do whatever that. it takes. He will he'll do, do whatever, whatever it takes. takes. And you have he'll to do whatever it that. takes. Cause I mean, there's yeah. been things in like these past, you know, years past where it's like, oh, Nick Cage, that guy's, you know, that guy is a lunatic. And I feel like, uh, you know, up until not too long ago, saying that he is a, not, you know, just the best actor of all time, but just saying that he is a really good actor, people would have been like, you're crazy. But I feel, and I'm not sure what it is. There's, I think it, there must be some kind of people cultural People are putting shift. respect on his name. People are putting respect are putting on, his, respect name. on his name. Nick Cage and Nickelback, both. Nick Cage and Nickelback both gaining the respect they deserve as of recent. They were the whipping boys. I'm through with standing in line. <laughs> Sorry. We don't know um, that's We got to Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> um <laughs> What um I had something Oh, I don't know this about Nick Cage and I don't think it's true at all. But I always envisioned him being a method actor, but when he was doing the National Treasure movies, he got so into like the role of Nicolas Cage, that he actually now lives life as Nicolas Cage as Bill, and as just ben acts Gates. as other people. Ben Gates. <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. As Ben Gates, as Benjamin Gates. He lives life as Benjamin Gates and just acts still in movies. Like, I think that he's still a little caught up in that role. Did you see the fucking picture? I think we talked about it, Andy. I don't know if you ever saw it, Derek. When he had the earring going, like, at, like, a recent interview. Do you know what I'm talking about, Andy? No. It was, like, a video clip. I sent it to you. Oh, is it the he, one where he, just, like, goes off? This outfit was... Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, that one. Yeah. And he's got, like... I'm pretty sure he had a feather earring I don't on. remember what he was wearing. But Harrison Ford's got... I think there was earring. a feather... He's got, like, a feather earring and stuff. Like he's, okay, yeah. so now... Okay, but that's what I mean. You're going to compare... Are you comparing Harrison Ford to, to Nicolas Cage? Because then we're talking about, you know... Then it comes back to, do you think that he's this great actor through this cultural change and belief that uh, he's done some good for the world? I just through mostly there's, there's something about seeing someone who is, you know, maybe it's because everybody's so torn in so many different directions these days. When you have anything you want at your fingertips, basically, there's a lot of different avenues, you know, calling you down. And there's just something to... to seeing someone who's so full of passion um, about, you know, anything, uh, you know, be it one thing or whatever. And Nick Cage definitely has a passion uh, for acting and his craft. And I just think, I guess that people are just more receptive of this idea that it's maybe not necessary, but it can certainly be a part of... Um, and is, you know, acceptable to be kind of, uh, for lack of a better term, like a, a, a lunatic, like a crazy person when you're so passionate about something. And, and you kind of, you can see the results of that um, artistically, you know, you can, tons of examples, right? And Nick Cage is yeah, definitely Nick, a passionate guy. And if you have critics, you're doing something right. Yeah, that's a great call. I think that's absolutely yeah. true. Yeah, so, and there's a there's actually a horror movie I want to watch with Nick Cage called Color in the Sky. I think it's called. It's like an old. It's kind of a Lovecraft sci-fi horror movie that I guess came out recently. I just want to throw that out there because I want to watch that. You guys might want to check it out because uh, you know it's almost Halloween and we just talked about Nick Cage. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've actually never heard of it. I, I definitely uh, do intend to check that out. 
Um, with that being said, um, what do you say? Maybe a little uh, who would win of the week over there, Andy? Yeah, Derek, if it's cool with you, I think we should get into it. Let's do it. Okay. I'll let you tee this one up, Andy. But I do want to uh, – yeah, you go, and then I'm going to say something immediately after. Okay, sounds like a plan. So uh, Derek introduced – Matthew to the Simpsons. Simpsons is my favorite show. Um, one of my, at least maybe my second favorite show of all time. I got my Bart Simpson hat on right here. That I always wear. Um, but Derek introduced you to the Simpsons, right, Matthew? Like you'd never seen it because I know yeah, that Derek got you like a definitely or something for your birthday one time. Obviously, Hit and Run, greatest video game of all time. Ever. Um, yeah, that. That's actually they got yeah. a re. Um, they got yeah, release that shit, but yeah. Um, so. We uh, wanted to incorporate that a little bit in here. We had to think of a good matchup, so I think we I think we nailed it with this one. This who would win of the week is Maggie Simpson versus Tommy Pickles from Rugrats. Okay, go ahead, Matthew. Um, what I'm say. Well, I just want to say I'm going to say two things quick, and then I'm going to. Toss it back to both of you guys. I'm excited for this one because as far as The Simpsons goes and cartoons in general, you two are probably have the most like information specifically on The Simpsons. Um, I know who I'm going to pick, but I want to hear everything that you guys have to say before I either join your team or burst your bubble because <laughs> everybody knows that my pick is always the correct pick. Um, on who is one of the who would win of the week? So um, how about we jump to uh, well, well, we'll go. Andy make some starting points, then we'll get into Derek, and, and we'll go from there. Okay, I am not going to say who I'm picking. I'm not even sure if I'm decided. I don't want to, you know, I want to look at this objectively. I don't want to necessarily bring my love for either of these shows into it because Rugrats obviously a classic. That's a sick show. Um, we know, okay, Tommy Pickles. Tommy Pickles is um, not only incredibly brave, but he's also incredibly, uh, uh, he is, um, there's an ingenuity to him, right? He's, he's a tinkerer. He's got his, his trusty screwdriver, gets him through all situations. Uh, he's a very technical thinker and technically minded uh, person, I think, when he approaches problems and he also obviously has a pretty good grasp on you know me mechanical elements um things of that nature maggie simpson is a straight up savage i mean she shot straight mr badass. birds um yep. she has achieved multiple feats that i mean just of of athletic prowess and obviously mental capacity that uh it's difficult. I mean, I, it's hard to see any baby um, ever achieving, um, even in a cartoon, I guess. I don't. Um, so I, I think that they've got two different skill sets, uh, two different approaches in this fight. Um, and I think either one could deserve to come out on top, certainly. Yeah. I have, probably like you, Andy more knowledge on Maggie Simpson than I do Tommy Pickles. Um, but I guess, yeah, taking the objective course and looking at both of them. Uh, and first off, Maggie, like you said, straight savage. She's a badass. She scared the mob off with a shotgun. She rallied up a whole daycare to help her escape. <coughs> she shot Mr. Burns. She saved Homer from drowning. Like, it's just, she's driven cars before. Like, it's, there's no shortage of Maggie doing things that are so beyond normal infant for a baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Tommy pickles. Yeah. I, I, when I think of him and I haven't watched really the Rugrats a lot since I was younger, but I used to watch it all the time. I mean, Tommy pickles to me, he was the leader. He was just the alpha of the Rugrats group. I mean, he was the go-to guy. And like you said, he's got a very technical prowess and you know, he's also got the whole speech thing on his side. Tommy can speak. <laughs> now, when you when when you're looking at fighting and combat and who would win, uh, you know your first assumption wouldn't always go to speech, but I think that that might be something that might play into it. Just showing that Tommy's a little bit more advanced 
when it comes to motor skills and uh, uh, just, I guess, brain maturity. So what I want to say, and I, I do already have my mind made up, but the thing about who would win of the week is there's no weapons, right? Like, we'll, you know, there's been conversation of, well, do we tell them beforehand so they have time to prepare? So if you want to say that that aids to Tommy, then we say, yeah, we could give him some time to prepare. But at the end of the day, there's not weapons. Well, so I'll say I don't much think that he does, does his... need the time to prepare because part of his technical thinking is adapting and thinking very quickly. Like, okay. I think that he has okay. shown, uh, you know, in the Rugrats series that he can, you know, look at a problem and pretty quick, you know, pretty quickly analyze it very well and figure out a solution. But given he doesn't necessarily have the ability to tinker or change anything in the situation other than it's just because you know what i mean it's just going to be him and maggie he doesn't have time to come up with something build something create something that's going to help him win this fight and i do think that his ability his critical thinking ability as a child as a baby cannot be like underlooked because when you look at maggie yes yeah, she's a savage but you also I feel like Maggie does things without thinking and does sometimes put herself in situations where then she has to get out of them because she did stuff without first considering what would happen. Whereas that's not something that Tommy would, Tommy would not find himself in that position as a baby, right? right. He would, you know, he, he would think before he does it. However, that sometimes could work in a fight to Maggie's advantage if she's willing to just be that savage that we say she is and go out there and just balls to the wall, go right at him, kick his ass, fights over quick. But if she doesn't react in that way, I think that if she at all takes foot off the gas, then Tommy would have the opportunity to use his ability to critical think to then manipulate Maggie into a position where he wins that fight. So then, so the point of this was you have to think, well, is Maggie's sheer ability to be a savage going to outweigh Tommy's ability to think? Mm -hmm. I will say this about Maggie. She is extremely agile. She is yes. able to swing off any obstacle around the room and yeah. use that to her advantage. I don't think Tommy has the mobility. I mean, look at the intro to Rugrats. He can <laughs> barely walk. <laughs> so... Uh, I mean, Maggie point. having Maggie having that ability, I think, would work insanely in a fight where you know maybe they didn't have weapons or you know they had very little time to prepare. Um, you know, whatever the circumstances are, I think I think Maggie has the ability to move and has and use the environment to her advantage. But then, yeah, then I guess you know, looking at Tommy in that situation, I don't know if he's gonna be able to defend Maggie flying around the ceiling fan and then onto the, the record player and then back at him and stuff. I, I don't know. Yep. I think that that might be where for me, the, the, the tables start to turn a little bit. That's an excellent point about Maggie's athleticism. Oh man, this is a tough one. I will say this. I think Maggie is very smart. Um, we know this. She knows not only how to handle herself when she's in just about any situation, she also knows when to get out of any bad situation. Tommy does not know when to give up. Tommy, to me, the best, the most accurate way I can kind of describe the way I see Tommy's approach to fighting is um like uh an anime type well, I know how, thing. I see like I've I see never, Tommy fighting I would just like want to finish Sherlock. this thought just to clarify okay. that but that's but we'll go to that because that's interesting but now I've not seen really any anime but what I've seen is a lot of guys who are like really like beat up and then they're like looking down and they're like, <laughs> And then there's another guy who's like, how did he get up? And he's like, I, the power of friendship or something like that. I'm pretty sure I just wrote the best anime of all time. Um, but that's what Tommy, that's what Tommy is. 
Um, and even if his friends aren't there, obviously this is a one-on-one -on -one battle. He can't, <laughs> not to be cheesy, but he carries that strength with, with him. He's got the moral strength. The strength absolutely. Of, yeah. What I was going to say, though, to chime in is, and then after this, I'll I will give my pick. I didn't want to lead on too early in the conversation because that sways Andrew's opinion. Um, <laughs> Tommy, I feel like, would be like a Sherlock Holmes type fighter. Like if you've seen those Sherlock Holmes movies with Robert Downey Jr., where like he's calculating, like I'm going to hit him here. That's going to do this to him, and then I smack him here. He's going to come at me with this, and then I do this. Like I think he's, you know what I mean? Like I think he he he's he has the, the plan. But I don't think that it would be enough to match, as Derek said, Maggie's athleticism based on, like, with, on top of, or however you want to say it, her just past of being, for lack of a better term, a savage. So I think my pick here is going to be Maggie Simpson. But I don't think that it's going to be an easy fight because I don't think that Tommy's going to lay down and I think that he is going to have the opportunity to inflict a lot of pain on Maggie. But I think at the end of the day, Maggie is just going to pick herself off the ground and snap his neck and call it a day. Like, All right, that's, tough to, think, that's a tough uh, point to argue. I, I, think, uh, I think my pick is Maggie. However, the caveat I will say is that the – beginning of that fight would be extremely important because I think as we kind of touched on Maggie would come out with a lot. And if Tommy, you know, is able to counter that in some way and swing the momentum early on, I think he's got a pretty fair shot in the fight. But despite that, my pick's still with Maggie. She's just a freak of nature. I, I do. I do agree though, that I think that depending on the start of the fight, the, the tables could turn either way. You know, it depends on if Maggie comes out hot early. But again, I, I and I just think back to the point you made because I I liked Maggie coming into the fight, but I was almost talking myself out of it. But mm -hmm. the point you made about her agility and her athleticism, yeah, Tommy doesn't have that. I mean, yeah, he has the ability to think, but how you know, you gotta execute. Right? How how far is that gonna go for him when when Maggie comes out? That's yeah, true. exactly. You gotta execute. Um, Andy, man, this is this is don't even a tough fight. Uh, Matthew, relax. <laughs> I think one of the things, and I want to say this: we've seen Maggie do a lot of crazy stuff. Tommy is certainly more tame in most of the situations we see him in. However, in the Rugrats movie. They do, like, the, these babies get, like, lost in the forest and they fight monkeys and stuff like that. I'm just remembering that now. That's why I'm bringing it up. Um, so he has had, and they get lost in Paris in the one, a lot of stuff. So he's had a few instances where his stuff is, you know, almost on par with some of the things that Maggie has done. Um, he's never shot in a billionaire, but, I mean, <laughs> we can all dream. Um the thing about Tommy Pickles, who I'm slowly realizing may be my personal hero, is that we've seen him, um, in any situation that he finds himself in, he's able to adapt so quickly. You know, uh, frickin' Angelica is causing a ruckus, his dog Spike gets loose, uh, monkeys are messing with his baby brother, there's a toy lost, you know, his best buddy Chucky is having, like, a panic attack, um... Tommy has always risen to the occasion. And that being said, my God, I'm being, I did not think I would be torn up so much about this one. Um, I just feel like, you know, it's tough because there's no situation that I can articulate necessarily that would prove this point. But I do think that Tommy would rise to this challenge and somehow be able to physically stop Maggie Simpson. I do think that somehow he would find a way to win this fight. That's what my gut is saying. That's what I am going to go with. Um... Yeah, I believe I believe in Tommy Pickles. Vote for him, twenty twenty. 
<laughs> I um, <coughs> Andy, I do think it would be a close fight. I'm not going to come at you for your reasoning behind picking Tommy. Oh, no, no. I'm not going to come at you for him. I'm going to come at you for your reasoning. Because you know, and don't even try to tell me that this isn't true. You know damn well that if Derek and I didn't come out here and pick Maggie, you would have picked Maggie. If I would if I would have said I think Tommy wins that fight, you would have picked Maggie. You don't have any integrity for the game. I can see it in your face. Wow. How dare yeah. you? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You're saying I don't have any integrity of who would win of the week? Yeah. Integrity is all there is in, in this in game, the, Matthew. You're in it for the no, you're in it for the controversy. You like to stir the pot. And the thing is, the pot always bites in the ass. Just join the winning side. I understand you if I thought that succeed? you really No, no. But if I thought that you genuinely thought that Tommy Pickles would win that fight, I would have no problem with it. And that's and you'd think that I'm just making See, it I up. under I understand what's going on here because <laughs> no one likes a landslide, right? So I don't I don't know. I Matt, you're his yeah. brother. You are in touch with these but, Yeah, Derek, he, 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 he swung a baseball bat at my head. That's headbones. not he true. Swung a Matt, you did bat that to me. Headbones. No. <laughs> and you're telling me I don't I can't tell his emotions. Like he swung a baseball bat. Matthew, you at my threw hat and it went that bat the wall. at me. No, that hole was See? in the wall because that's where the bat landed when you threw it at my head. And I had to hide behind the couch. Because it's up against the wall in history, a very weird way. The, history the, is written by the successor. Isn't that a, isn't that a saying? History the is relationship, written by the winner. <laughs> the relationship of Matthew and Andrew very much borders that of the Joker and Batman, I will say. <laughs> oh my gosh. And I'm yeah, but Batman. I'm the Joker. Yeah. <laughs> you are absolutely. I like not only that we both picked the, like, <laughs> not that we are those, but that we each wanted to be that one. Yes. You're like, I'm Batman. Yeah. <laughs> and Matt starts laughing. You are Andy. Because <laughs> when I said that, I was like, if Matthew might try to be Batman here, and that's just not true. But nope, he's like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm the Joker. Yeah. Oh but the God, thing I'm is, you're not that. Batman either. Yes, I am. You're not the Dark Knight. You have no idea. I've got <laughs> I've got so many levels to me, Matthew. See, that's Batman, the the real uh, Batman would have a similar situation. No one would know. Everyone would think he's just Bruce Wayne. I mean, but that's exactly right. I'm just humble old Andy Canada. Okay, and that's the way I like people to think about it. All right. If they only well, knew. let's go around one more time, lock in our answers. Uh, um, I'm taking Maggie. It's all, you know what? Let's let's let Andy decide here. He can be the second one because you know what my answer is going to be. That doesn't even matter. Yeah, but I want I want. And Andy look at him answer. fucking think about changing his goddamn answer, folks. You guys can't see us unless you're watching this the on thing, YouTube. I've never but seen I'm Tommy dumb. Pickles lose, and Maggie Simpson has walked away from situations. I'm sure. All right. Well, then make your pick. I'm going with the power of friendship. I'm going with Tommy Pickles. But you thought about it. I Well, because it's such a close fight. And, man, there is part, like, uh, if, it's, if we're just thinking about it physically, Maggie Simpson would beat the absolute shit out of Tommy Pickles. Yeah. But I think there's more to it than that. At least in my mind yeah, in this it, fight, there's more to it than that. Oh, there's always and more. With those, you know. And with those other factors, Tommy Pickles comes out on top. But And I don't know the dimensions of either of them, but I would assume they're about the same size. Probably. Tommy Pickles' head, though, is massive. It is. If he ha- if he gets a headbutt in... <laughs> right. She's a, that <laughs> might be on. his one saving grace. Yeah, but yeah. but she, Maggie's pretty much wearing a mouth guard. At, at, you know what she I mean? Is, if she's, yeah. That's yeah. true. Well, I don't know if teeth is a big factor for either of them. No, but it's to, it, you know mouth guards stop your jaw from from you right, know really right. compressing when you get hit in the head and that that can go a long way. Derek, I gotta lock it in, my girl Maggie Simpson. All right, and that's what I thought. But as always, you will be all to vote on social media, even though I'm sure Maggie Simpson will still win. I do think this is a close fight, though. Um, one of the closer ones we've had. Definitely could have gone back and forth for a while there. Um, 
We've been going for a while here. There is two more things. It's actually one thing, but it's two specific things I wanted to touch on that we had. Well, Andy hinted at, um, but we hadn't really talked about, and that is um, GameCube games, specifically Simpsons Hit and Run and Luigi's Mansion. So Derek, I would say in his prime, could probably have speed ran Luigi's Mansion at a pro level. He had that game down to a science like I've never seen before. And that game is fun as hell. But like to the point where Derek would hop on and beat it in 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 like minimal hours. Like it would be done quick. Um and Simpsons hit and run, we played an excessive amount of um it's funny because I've told they uh, Andrew and Derek both know this, or I, I think I told Andy, um, but I actually just two or three days ago went out and bought a copy of the Simpsons hit and run. I'd been tracking it down for a while looking online and you could buy it on eBay, but it's rather expensive. And I worry about buying old used games on a site like that sometimes. Um, and then just through a series of luck, um, they had one copy of it at a, at a GameStop in Buffalo. And after, after a little bit of, um, uh, footwork. I tracked it down, went up, picked it up for for a measly thirty five dollars, and um, so I've been back on the Simpsons hit and run grind the past few days. Um, but uh, yeah, what do you think about those games, Derek? Yeah, those are by far my two favorite of all time. I mean, because those are the games that you pretended to be sick so you could stay home and play <laughs> for yep. school. I mean, it's just. And I, the, the funny thing about Luigi's Mansion is that I remember my first time ever playing through that game, you know, right after I got it. There's a point in the game, and I'm not going to spoil it, but I had no idea what to do. I had no idea where to go. And, you know, this is probably back when I was in second or third grade. You know, I didn't, we, I didn't really have access to the Internet yet. I didn't have cell phone. I didn't know what to do. So I went around the school and I asked, and I could barely find anyone that knew what to do. And I think I eventually did find someone that knew exactly where I was supposed to go. And, like, that... And then once I got past that one part and then got through that game again, I would just play it over and over again. Same thing with Simpsons Hit and Run. It's so muscle memory. Like, I played both of them this week because I brought my GameCube to my new house. And, you know, I was texting Matt about it, and I was like, I got to play Hit and Run now. And the muscle memory is still there. I still know all the shortcuts, all the spots, and, and those yep. games. There's just something else to them. Completely single player. You don't even have to play with other people. And, you know, they're, yeah. you, could, you could waste days playing it. It's so amazing. Yeah, like especially like Simpsons Hit and Run yeah. is on it. And I mean, I've seen this comparison before a lot of times, and it's a little, it's a little like cliche for my liking, but it literally was like the, it was, it's like GTA, it but GTA. like before it is, if you include all, I mean, if you're just doing the levels, so like if you've played the game before and you're just playing the missions to beat the level, um, you can, you can do it fairly quickly, like within, like, I mean, the guys who are real, like the, the, there's literally pro guys that can can do it in under two hours um but it, it doesn't take an enormous amount of time but if you do all of the side missions all of the races get all of the car you know what i mean for all of the characters all the um, gags wasp it's cameras, a, everything. it's yeah it's a it's a time consuming game and it's fun as hell and even like dude like even the other night i was playing and i think i was on like i, I just started and I, I was on the third level it's lisa's level and um, I was playing. I was just mission, 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 mission. Like just kind of going through them. Like just because I hadn't played it in so long, wasn't really doing. I did a few like side races, um, just because in the Bart level specifically, um, you can do the one with um, um, Grandpa, and you get the like the World War Two looking like the Jeep, Jeep thing, the car. <laughs> yeah, and I love. Yeah, and I, yeah. So I I do that one, get that, and then um. But I was like, dude, I haven't even, I didn't, I had, I, th I didn't even have a hit and run yet at the point because I wasn't all the way through Lisa's level. And Lisa's level is where you get all the hit and runs because when you're driving quickly through the boardwalk, you're just rocking yeah. people. So I was like, you know what? Like just for fun, like you get a hit and run and then you just try to outrun the police, like little shit like that. It's just, it's very fun. So I wanted to definitely make sure we touched on those. Um, but uh, it's yeah. And just the and if you love the show, I'll make this quick. If you love the show, just the amount of little Easter eggs from the first 10 seasons, 11 seasons, which is my favorite Simpsons era is yeah. the first, you know, 10 seasons. The amount of references and stuff that you're going to know, you're going to know like all the little jokes they make. It's really cool. Yeah, they always, well, Simpsons, I mean, for as much 
merchandise related to them as there is. Um, I would say most of it, uh, maybe arguably, is like really good, like quality, and and does sort of um, uh, it gives you points for being a fan of the show. And Hit and Run is definitely an example of that. With talking it with you guys, like, cause I, I never really got to play it. Um, I never played it all the way through. Um, I only played it a couple times when it was like sitting down there, um, when you guys were like taking a break or something. And it's you know just talking about how long it is and how much there is sort of to do when you're doing everything, not just the missions. It feels to me almost like that was right in a time, and I don't know when that game came out exactly. I want to guess like. 2003. 2003. Two? Yeah. 2003. Yeah. That's well, it's fine. Um, it feels like that's in a time, maybe not, but maybe just with The Simpsons. Like, it was in this time where games were sort of right between where we're at now and still had enough of that hint of like the old Atari games, like um, Adventure, I think is that one, where there's kind of like. Oh, yeah. A lot of like, they were trying to do a lot of like weird complex <clears throat> stuff, but the technology wasn't quite there. The technology wasn't quite there for what they wanted to do, but the industry was at a point where it was so still sort of obscure and unregulated that they could do whatever they wanted. And Definitely. because, you know, that's just sort of like the nature of the people who were making those games, they just threw a ton of stuff and a you know, and um, and the end did it right. You know, it's not just like they threw it in there, you know, just for the sake of it. And there's just something said for just you know being able to take the disc out of the box, put it in the console, and play it immediately without updates, downloads. You know, obviously you have waiting time and stuff, but there's no paywalls. There's nothing. At, everything you can do in that game is all in the confines of that disc, and you don't have to do anything else. You don't need internet. It's just amazing. Like I, that's why I to this day like I'll just fire the GameCube up, and it's. It's just the best way to game, in my opinion, still. It is good fun. It is good old-fashioned fun. Um, Kick the can. All right, well, yeah, so we've been going for almost an hour and a half here, Andy, so I think it's it's about that time. Um, is there anything else you, you want to add before we uh, we wrap it up here? Uh, Derek, thank you for coming on, man. Um, we really appreciate it. Thank you so much it. for having me. And we had a good time talking to you. Um, come on whenever you want. Uh, you know, come on with Jared sometime. When you guys put out, you know, next thing or whatever. Um, sure. And yeah, I just remind people to go and uh, take a look at Isolation Waves. Uh, give it a listen. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say um, just one more time just for the listeners. I know we said we'll we'll link it, which we will. But um, just social media, stuff like that. Um, tell them that one more time. That way people can go check it out. Definitely, because I'm sure there'll be some people interested, especially with it being a uh, local talent and whatnot. Of course, yeah. So, um Isolation Waves EP uh, by Control is available on Spotify and Apple Music for streaming. Uh, and you can find our Instagram at control.page. And on there, you'll be able to find the link to go listen to it wherever you'd like. And, you know, we post some interesting content. We'll have some more cool stuff coming out soon, as well as more music in the future. And then our Facebook is control.page or control.band.page. And I'm sorry, the Instagram is control.band. So, yep, visit those gotcha. uh, social media pages to get the links, and um, you'll be able to listen to it, and we'd really appreciate it if you do. Awesome. Well, Derek, again, thank you so much for coming on. I was really looking forward to this. Um, I feel like we didn't even really get into, you know, the detail of so many stories that, that we have to tell. Um, I mean, I can't – my memory is horrible as it begins, but my I can't even – begin to comprehend all the things that uh, we did growing up. So we'll definitely have to get you back on. Um, hopefully maybe soon we can start getting some, you know, some in-person interviews and stuff like that. It's a lot of stuff that Andy and I have been talking about as the pandemic starts to come to a close here, but um, thank you for coming on and everybody make sure you check that out. And um, thanks guys for listening. Uh, Andy. Boom. Love it. Thanks again, Derek. Let's get out of thank here. Thank you so See much. You, Love you, Andy. Yeah. See ya.